So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, I'm Frédéric Chéreau, the CEO of Logic Bio. And I'd like first to uh, thank the organizer to giving us the opportunity to present at uh, Cell Engine meeting on the net, and as well as the audience for your interest. So Logic Bio is a clinical stage uh, company developing a, a differentiated gene editing technology. And we are focusing on, on patients suffering from uh, devastating uh, diseases. We are a public company, so I will uh, let you look at our forward-looking statements. So the company is based on two uh, main platforms, uh, and we combine these two very innovative platforms to uh, tackle difficult-to-treat diseases. The first platform is GeneRide. Uh, it's uh, uh, our editing platform, uh, and it's a nucleus free, uh, promoterless gene editing platform. We don't use nucleases because we are able to leverage a naturally occurring process called homologous recombination. We also don't need to bring any exogenous gene, the promoter, sorry, uh, as we take advantage of a very potent and very highly expressed uh, promoter uh, in, within the cells. I think this platform is uniquely suited to provide a very site-specific integration. And that gives, gives us a lot of durability uh, of the technology. On the right-hand side, you can see the other platform, which is uh, we call Savvy. It's so a next generation AV capsid platform. Uh, and uh, we, we have a very good tissue topresis that we assess in what we believe to be clinical, clinically predictive models, uh, showing, uh, showing uh, capsids with high functional transduction, low immunogenicity, and importantly, high manufacturing needs. These two platforms have been uh, uh, discovered at Stanford and has been developed for about uh, four years at Logic Bio now. So let's look at uh, GeneRide first, uh, and let me tell you how it works. So as I said, it's promoterless, nucleus-free. You are first, thanks to a capsid, the target, targeted cell entry uh, to, to through the cells. Then we traffic to the nucleus, and we deliver GeneRide, which is this uh, new uh, segment of DNA you've seen appearing. GeneRide is made of uh, four parts. Uh, the, obviously, the ITR, which represents the, the AAV, in orange, that the protein, the gene of interest, uh, it's coupled with, uh, on the left, a small blue uh, 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 peptide uh, called 2A peptide, and it's flanked by two homology arms. One is uh, uh, purple, and the other one is light blue. These homology arms are about uh, between 500 and 1500 base pair each. And we build these homology arms in a, in a way to target um, uh, a specific locus in the, in the, in the, in the genome. And uh, in the case of the liver, we have decided to go after the albumin. And the purple uh, um, uh, homology arm is mimic uh, the, the end of the albumin locus just before the stop coder. And so by homologous recombination, we can insert at the end of the albumin locus the 2A as well as uh, the protein of interest. You can see here. Then, after the transcription, we have a long mRNA made of the albumin, the 2A, and the protein of interest, which is grabbed by the, 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 um, the ribosome, sorry, and which starts its read. And uh, we first uh, uh, um, uh, express the albumin tagged with the 2A, and then the 2A helps us to do what it's called polycystronic uh, protein expression. With only one ribosomal read, we can express two uh, different uh, proteins at a one-to-one -one ratio, one being the albumin 2A, the other one being uh, the protein of interest. Protein of interest can stay intracellular, as it is for the orange one, or go extracellular uh, and goes to the circulation. When it stays intracellular, what is very interesting with our technology is uh, we don't need a biopsy to measure the effic efficiency or the integration of our technology because we have a surrogate marker with the albumin 2A. We can dose the albumin 2A in the circulation and it gives you a good idea of how much you have been integrating and, and how this integration is producing protein and how this uh, production or its protein expression is also evolving over time. 
The second platform, as I said, is our next generation platform called Savvy. And why did you work? Did we work, on, especially you, did they work at Stanford originally on a new, a new uh, synthetic capsid? It's because, as we know now, most of the naturally occurring capsids are, have been selected in a, a classical mouse model, and they are very good to target a specific tissue. Here you can see uh, the, uh, the, the um, tissue, uh, the liver as a tissue, and some capsid that many of you know. We know now that uh, they don't uh, uh, translate very well to NHP, and the peak of expression you had very high in mice are a little bit lower in, in, uh, in um, NHPs now. And, uh, and, and we know now, thanks to all the clinical trials, that unfortunately the peak of expression is are much lower in humans than they were in the animal species. If you look at the bottom of the, of the, of the slide, LKO3, which is the first synthetic capsid which has been developed by the, the team at Stanford, that's been used by Spark, doesn't work very well in mice, and I will explain uh, later why, but works, uh, I mean, is the translation from NHP to human is, is very good. And uh, as we know, this uh, capsid is used in the Hemophilia A program of Spark, and is showing a very interesting uh, uh, transduction and expression data. So the, the, our, our platform is made of three steps. First, a very uh, uh, innovative uh, design, AAV design. Then we select in relevant models, and, and we, from the beginning, but we intensify uh, the process development uh, uh, as, as we are moving forward to deliver the best possible capsid to the liver or another tissue. I will go quickly uh, through this slide, but we use for our design all the new bioengineering technologies that others are using with direct evolution. Uh, we create a very uh, uh, differentiated uh, libraries of 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7 variants. And we have a rational uh, design and we incorporate also in, in this uh, design uh, natural, new uh, natural AAV variants to make this library as diverse as possible. Then we test the libraries uh, in, as I said, relevant model. We start with mice model. Uh, it allows us to test uh, large libraries. And by iteration, we select the one which are the uh, uh, most uh, tissue tropic. Once again, I, I keep uh, pounding on the liver because that's where we've done most of the work. But uh, uh, we, we, have, we use a chimeric mice model, which has a liver composed of 80 or 90 percent of human cells and the rest being uh, murine cells. We select the capsids for their propensity to go to uh, the human cells. Then we confirm wh wh what we have found with a more limited number of uh, capsids, 12 to 20, in other animal uh, models, uh, mostly NHP but not only, and we, con we confirm the functional expression, we, con we look at the immunogenicity in animals uh, as well as in uh, human plasma to select finally what is the best capsid for uh, this platform. I talked about the manufacturing, that's something we are taking uh, very seriously early on and, and we have ramped up, uh, uh, I mean, uh, pretty uh, um, intensively on, on process development of logic bio. The, the team is about, uh, process development is about half of the R&D team in terms of number of people. So let me show you some data. Uh, and I will uh, talk about functional transduction, which is a product of transduction and expression. And you, and you can see on the left, uh, the, the, we don't see very well the AV2 is uh, the, the one on the very left. And we looked at the, we plot the DNA reads, which are a, a marker of transduction, uh, to the RNA reads uh, to look at the expression. And you can see that AV2 is the lowest, uh, then comes AV8. LKO3 is much higher than AV2 and AV8. And we have this new capsid called SL65, uh, which is even much better than um, uh, LKO3. So we believe this capsid will be a very potent capsid for the liver uh, in clinical trials. We looked at the immunological profile compared to LKO3, and you, you can see it on this uh, uh, heat map that we are, uh, I mean, seems to have a very good and very interesting uh, immunological profile. Let's look at some data in uh, large animals. Here it's monkey with a very reasonable dose. And here we, we are comparing uh, uh, factor 9 expression with a canonical gene therapy, so machine addition technology. It's not gene editing like we do with gene right. Uh, we think it's a better way uh, initially uh, to select the capsids. 
And uh, with, uh, in this experiment, we compare the AVA to AQ3 and the And as you can see, uh, we have a much better uh, factor eight expression, uh, factor nine, sorry, expression uh, uh, in SF65 than we have in, in the two others. So very encouraging data. And last but not least on this uh, platform, we also, as I said, worked a lot on, on the process development to see how we could improve our yield. And here we are comparing the yield of uh, SN65, measured in DDPCR, while the other uh, are measure, measured in, with QPCR. But here again, compared to what has been published, uh, disclose, publicly disclosed, you can see we have a yield uh, which is uh, very, very interesting. And we have uh, uh, duplicated at uh, uh, small, medium, and, and large scale. So let's go back to uh, GeneRide for a minute, and, and especially on our clinical stage program for pediatric patients with uh, MMA, methylmalonic acidemia. So here is a, a scored card for methylmalonic acidemia. Uh, the incidence is about 1 in 50,000 births. Uh, interestingly, this disease is uh, on the newborn screening panel in every state in the US, despite the fact that there is no treatment. The only uh, uh, tool the physician can use uh, to help these patients is uh, a strict uh, low protein and high calorie diet. Uh, low protein because the mutation, the gene called MUT, um, brings, I mean, uh, prevents this, uh, the, these patients to metabolize uh, certain amino acids and fats, so proteins. So, fortunately, if you don't give them uh, enough growth, uh, enough proteins, they don't grow. If you give them proteins, you are at risk of increasing the circulating methylmalonic acid levels. Uh, which leads very quickly, uh, soon after birth, few weeks, few months, uh, to development delays and very frequent uh, hospitalization, care hospitalization, a lot of decompensation. So ultimately, uh, what uh, can be proposed today to this patient is liver transplantation, and um, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, performed earlier and earlier in very high highly skilled surgical sites. I think a, a picture is uh, worth a thousand worst, and you can see here uh, some mice we have used in our preclinical studies. You can see on the, on the left, the vehicle treated mice, smaller, it's about five month old mice, smaller, uh, hunchback posture, and not a lot of activity. While the treated mice uh, is, I mean, uh, is normal growth, no, normal size, and very active, and is exploring the cage as a, uh, classical mice will, will do. When we show this, um, this video to pa patients, families, and then physicians, the first reaction is, is uh, that it looks a lot uh, of what we have seen with the children uh, after a liver transplantation. I mean, we, we believe our technology could be seen as a molecular uh, liver transplantation. Uh, here are some data uh, uh, which have been used in a uh, very specific model. We have used multiple uh, mice mod and MMA mice model for during the, the preclinical development phase. Uh, this one is uh, one with a, we call the diet challenge model, where we can, uh, uh, at the end, after six months, we can trigger uh, a metabolic crisis by increasing the level of protein. And you can see that we have a great, great uh, difference in survival, uh, great difference in growth, as well as in uh, elevation of circulation. In MMA, despite the fact that we overfeed these mice with, uh, with proteins. Another feature of our technology is uh, selective advantage. And uh, here, what we see after a limited number of cells being modified at the time of the injection, that you can see on the left panel, on the top uh, uh, left one, uh, it's, uh, it's, about, it's, a, it's about 1% of the cells being modified. But because the modified cells are of better health, they take over the non-modified cells, and you can see that 1.5 months after, three months after, and six months after, a large part of the, of the um, liver has been colonized by modified hepatocytes. And that's bringing more and more protein and more and more health uh, to, to, to the mice in this case, and hopefully to the patients. That's something we can, we don't have to do uh, biopsies or sections like that. As I said before, we can measure the albumin 2A, uh, in the circulation, and that's what you see on the right hand side, a great correlation uh, uh, of albumin to a level, circulating albumin to a levels with the selective advantage. A few words about the clinical trial. Uh, it's a, it's, it will be eight patients uh, uh, in, six, in six sites in the US, and we do 
dose escalation and intracord de-escalation. De and we will start on the, the box on the top, the light blue box on the top, with a low dose and age 3 to 12. And that's what we have uh, convinced the FDA to do. It's to intervene when it's very important for the patient before some non-reversible sequelae uh, open, occurs. Sorry. When um, uh, we will see safety, we will be able to move to another dose on the right. But when we will see safety and we will detect albumin 2A, we will be able to stay first on the same dose, but to de-escalate in age and in all patients as young as six months old. So this year, uh, we'll uh, uh, dose the first patient in the first part of, I mean, early this year. Uh, so hopefully very soon, uh, we'll be able to share some good news. Uh, we will uh, disclose some retrospective natural history data uh, and, and uh, we will give you some operational updates on the dose escalation, age escalation, which will give you a good sense of how the trial is progressing and how uh, safe the technology is and how uh, efficient potentially uh, the technology when we will see this uh, albumin to it. So and the goal is for us to deliver interim proof of concept data uh, at the end of this year. That's our pipeline. Uh, uh, MMA is clinical stage. We have done some work in four other indications, hemophilia B, alpha-1 trypsin, and Krigler-Najar. Um, we have presented work in this one. Krigler-Najar development is a collaboration with Takeda for about a year now. Uh, and uh, we have now a lot of, uh, that's what you can see in blue, a lot of other diseases we are exploring based, I mean, on, on uh, the experience we have accumulated in intracellular proteins diseases, selective protein diseases, and and uh, and moving to other tissues, which is what we are uh, doing in 2021. Would it be with the capsids, but also uh, with uh, the gene right technology? So busy year with a lot of milestones, a lot around sunrise as a clinical trial, uh, but a lot also around uh, the pipeline. Uh, uh, with a new, a new in-house development candidate. Uh, we will also uh, uh, share with you more data. Uh, we have already started, but we will have more to come in with this next generation capsids. And, and we continue also to develop the gene right platform by itself. So nothing would have been possible without uh, the team. And I would say that uh, moving from uh, a concept or the beginning of the project and, and uh, with three people and being uh, getting an IND approved in three years uh, has been possible only uh, thanks to the dedication and, and uh, the skill of the people you can see on the slide and the many others who are part of the company. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a good end of the day.